Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Phantom Nightmare Core Set TCG Exclusive Ashend with the potential of 10%. Ashend is a TCG exclusive that's, com that's coming out in Phantom Nightmare. Now, why is the potential at 10%? As there's just uh, nothing this archetype can do. While the artwork looks amazing and um, it looks great from an artistic standpoint, from a play, from a playing standpoint, it's just we don't know. There's far too few cards to render a playstyle here. So, yep, it's just going to remain at 10%. And so we have the value cards of this set, Promethean Princess, Bestower of Flames, and Snake Eyes Poplar. Expect these cards to be the most expensive cards of this set. We have our support update is Horus, Aroma, Goatee, and Raid Raptor. With Raid Raptor getting a complete overhaul in this set in particular, and looking quite dangerous, especially as a competitive deck going forward. Um, definitely Raid Raptor, I would recommend getting it. All the cards in it are commons, very easy to get, very cheap. And if you have Raid Raptors already, um, just get the Raid Raptor deck with a new support and it'll just do wonders. We have the Legacy support. We have Earthbound coming in, Magus Spectre, Ubel, Gate Guardian, and Goblin Biker, which Goblin Biker is based off of the Goblin... Um, uh, you know, the goblin, miscellaneous goblin monsters we've had in Yu-Gi-Oh! since early, the early days of Yu-Gi-Oh! And now they've been just made into an archetype called Goblin Biker, all combining together. And we have Hidden Potential, Voiceless Voice. Indeed, this is the archetype that is uh, premiering in here, and again, it has Hidden Potential. There's a lot that uh, we as TCG players are expecting from this, as it's done some numbers in the OCG, but it's yet to see whether it'll do some numbers here in TCG. Okay, let's move on. And we have our wild card, Mutamorphosis. Indeed, this is a card, basically, this is a reverse metamorphosis um, that was banned, I believe. Yes. So this is a card that's just the reverse version of Metamorphosis, which we have banned at the moment. And we're yet to see um, what this card is going to do. Its effect is extremely interesting and has a lot of potential for a lot of nonsense, right? And even though the effect looks quite busted, it's quite restricted, actually. And so it's we're yet to see what this card can do. Currently, this card is only good in decks that feature the runic engine. So that's where it can shine. Outside of the runic engine, we're not too sure where this card can really go. But it's up to TCG to make this card worthwhile. And I would recommend getting some yourself. They are not expensive. It's going to be quite cheap. And it's a hidden spice. That will definitely be in our top in our meta players, you know, card list soon enough in the future. And so we have the Yu-Gi-Oh Awards candidates. We have the best reprint, Triple Tactics Thrust, Maze of Millennia. Indeed, for this year so far, Maze of Millennia coming out in January of 2024. This is the best reprint, I think, for the year so far. Until we have better reprints coming out in other sets, so far this is a candidate for the best reprint. And I'm gonna call it now the best archetype of 2024. I'm gonna call it now is gonna be Snake Eye slash Dear Bell Star. Indeed, I ex we expect this deck, this is expected to be the best archetype of this year it's we're going to we expect to see it in every single deck list just in every single deck this is the archetype to beat this is the archetype that is expected to have the most wins in ycs the most uh regional tops the most ycs tops and this is a deck there's a lot of expectations for this so we will see at the end of the year whether it's going to remain and keep those expectations that's about it Okay, and so we come into our grading for Phantom Nightmare. 
So looking at Phantom Nightmare, the grade is B. It's for bravery. And you might wonder why? Why do I grade this uh, core set as B? Well, it's not good enough to be an A class set. Um, it's just not that good enough. With only two cards that are really potentially good that players are going to be looking for, Horus is nice, and the Goblin Biker is pretty nice as well, but we don't pretty much know what Goblin Biker does. And Goblin Biker, I would say, has hidden potential. Uh, not to say that Goblin Biker can't do anything, but Goblin Biker looks to be a fair deck. There's nothing wrong with fair decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, but unfortunately in TCG, fair decks doesn't necessarily mean good in the competitive scene. So we're yet to see what this Goblin deck will do. In terms of um, Voiceless Voice, again, um, that OCG doesn't translate as well as TCG. And while in the OCG, Voiceless Voice has been doing relatively well, in TCG, we're yet to see whether this will do anything. As the Snake's Snake Idea Bellstar package proves looks to be a more solid foundation that TCG players are going to trust a bit more as it has a proven track record and results. And the uh, ceiling of set deck is high. I mean, the Promethean Princess that premieres in this set is basically, with its effect-wise, is basically Summon Sorceress Part 2. Um, even though it isn't Summon Sorceress, but the effect, I would feel, is so similar, the impact of the card is similar. It's just, it does quite a lot for Link 3. So definitely we have that being the case. But even though we have a breakout superstar, which is Promethean Princess, and we have Poplar, two cards don't make a great set. And that is why with final decision, it remains at B rank. That's all I've got to say about the set we come to the end of this video so as i like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh master my fate right is in your hands